Welcome everyone. My name is Eric and I'm with Forest River Berkshire. I'd like to welcome you guys here to tour with me the new 2022 Berkshire XL 40C. Join me on the inside of the coach. What I first like to highlight is our cockpit area. The great thing about these Berkshire XLs is not only are your cockpit seats upgraded to the Villa Comfort Fit seats, but in the passenger chair, we're also, we're also gonna feature a passenger workstation. So to utilize that workstation, and it's a great workstation that actually has storage built into the passenger side console for it. I got this nice bar that comes across. My desk actually stores right next to the seat. I pop my desk in. And the greatest thing about this is, is that I can move this thing wherever I need to freely. Moving to the dash side of the coach, what you'll find is on the windshield, you're gonna get a power front shade. There's also gonna be a sun shade that's power off the windshield. I got my great ergonomically designed dash. In the center here, I'm gonna have my 10.1 inch Magnadyne stereo. The great thing about this stereo is that it does have a GPS for RVs or a trucker style GPS built into it. It's gonna be the co-pilot GPS. So that's only gonna take me down the roads that I can actually fit down and make it nice and simple. Moving below there, I got a bunch of toggle switches here that are gonna control a couple different functions of the dash. The first two are gonna be for the sunshade, nightshade. I do got an auxiliary start, which is like running a set of jumper cables from my house batteries to my coach batteries. So if I would ever need to jumpstart the coach and I got life in my house batteries, but not my coach batteries, I can do that. Next I have my map lights, which are my overhead lights here. Finally, if we move down below, I got the fans, I got my air horn, I have my radio switch, my generator start, and my step well cover. And then all my HVAC controls. Moving to the driver's seat of the coach, what I like about this Villa furniture is that it's, very, it's really comfortable driving down the road. This coach is gonna feature suspended pedals, which make it easier for me to get comfortable when I'm driving this thing down the road. I also have, instead of having my transmission on this side of the coach, it has been moved with the Freightliner OptiView to where it's actually off the steering column of the coach. So now everything is right in front of me. This coach is gonna feature the Freightliner digital dash, all my gauges are going to be built into that dash, so it's really easy and everything's almost like a heads-up style display. My eyes are focused straight going down the road. Finally, if I need to maneuver the steering wheel, there is a foot pedal down here that will allow me to telescope the wheel out, lift it up. That makes it easier to actually transition in and out of the driver's seat. But I kind of like to get it set to where I like it in the coach. Moving to the driver's side of the coach, what you're going to find is I got dual cup holders, my headlights to turn them on, controls for my power mirrors. I also have an induction charger for my phone, my air brakes, of course, and finally my jack pad, or my, my jack controls. What I like about this cockpit, and when I sit down and when I think about all the features that it has, is number one, I can put my cell phone back here, I can Bluetooth it, to the stereo here, or I can Bluetooth it to the Freightliner OptiView dash. That decision is mine to make. But what I like about the other side of it is, is that I still have USB charging ports right here. You'll also find some USB charging ports over on the passenger side, along with 120 or 110 volt outlet. As we transition and I step back a little bit from the cockpit, what I'd like to feature is our cab over drop down bed. The best thing about this bed is that number one, it's power. It runs off of a seat belt system. You can see this one actually has part of the netting actually up on it. This bed is, this bunk is great. It can hold up to 500 pounds. So I could actually get a couple kids or a couple adults up here for added sleeping. There is a TV up above. I do have storage also above my dash, that, even, that the storage is actually accessible even if the bed's up. Look how quiet that is. Moving to the campsite of the coach, directly behind the cockpit, what you're gonna find is you're gonna find our four person style dinette. This is a dream style dinette, so it will drop down to make a bed. 
The other thing that I like about how we do our nets is that I'm not the smallest guy in the world, but I seem to fit in here and be comfortable in here when I'm sitting down trying to eat. Behind the dinette, it's gonna feature our Villa Comfort Fit Sofa. Once again, this is a pretty comfortable piece of furniture. Cool little knickknacks kind of behind here is I do have a pop-up outlet. We'll all get three 110 plugs and I'll also pick up some more USBs. So if I have my phone with me, you know, I can just plug it in and charge it, not a big deal. Directly, located directly across from the sofa, what I'm gonna have is my TV. The nice thing about that positioning with where the TV is in the sofa is that if I'm sitting down to watch TV, I'm directly across from it. So I'm not turning my head, I'm not worried about anything in that frontage. More features of this sofa are gonna be the seat belts that are incorporated with it. You will get three seat belts in the sofa. And it's also gonna feature a height of bed with an inner air spring mattress. Now that height of bed is gonna be a pullout. It's gonna be a queen size bed. So if I had a second set of adults going with me, most likely I'm gonna probably offer them this bed to sleep on. Go, let's go back to the TV area. What I like about this TV area when I look at it, it's number one, the TV's up high. So if I'm sitting down on the sofa, it's real easy for me to watch the TV. This next thing I like is I have this great counter space area underneath to where, I don't know about you guys, but I like to bring my coffee maker with me. And what I'm always looking for in a coach is where do I put my coffee maker? And this floor plan, it happens to be my coffee maker goes right back here. There's a pop-up outlet. Similar to what you found behind the TV, I got three 110 receptacles and two uh, USB ports off there. Also with the TV, just below the countertop, I'm gonna have a sound bar. We're also gonna have a Blu-ray player along with our four x four matrix for our TVs. To talk about the matrix system a little bit for you guys, what the matrix system gives me as the user or the end user the ability to do is that I can take an Amazon Fire Stick, plug it into the back of that matrix, and I can display my Fire Stick on the four main TVs of the coach all at the same time. Just below this, you're gonna get the electric fireplace. So, to kind of go full circle on this vertical area here, to me this is all ambience, is what this is, when I'm in the coach. Not only do I have my entertainment, I got the fireplace that's gonna give me 5,000 BTUs of heat, I got the sound bar, and I got the matrix system all in one general area of the coach, nice, cleanly organized. Let's talk about some of the materials that you guys are seeing right now in the picture. My countertops in this coach are gonna be a solid surface countertop featuring a lighted edge. My wood is gonna be real solid wood that's gonna be stained. My door fronts are gonna be real wood, real wood door fronts going around, and my, do my doors and drawers are gonna be real wood also. Just below the fireplace, you may notice the toe kick lighting. That helps with the ambience of this coach. Not to forget, but one of the other cool features is that the TV actually, I do not lose the space behind it for storage. So in this area behind the TV, you may find a safe, an electric safe that's great for your valuables. You also have some wine bottle holders. So let's go ahead and close that up. Let's continue with the overhead cabinet space. I got a great big overhead cabinet just next to the TV. It's great for storing a lot of little odds and ends, some of those bigger things that may not fit in the pantry. And let's look at this, let's check out the sink. Now you'll see me moving these sink covers and you may look at this floor point and say, where do those go when I don't wanna use them? Underneath the sink, there will be a spot that's built and designed just for those covers for the sink to get them out of the way and properly store them. When I look at this sink, it's a deep farmhouse style sink. It's bigger than what we do in the regular Berkshire. And it's also gonna be a sink to where if I wanted to add a sink within a sink, I could do this with this sink. When I look at my faucet, it's gonna be a pull out, giving me full control. And it makes me, gives me a residential feel. When I move up to the backsplash here, this is gonna be a full tile backsplash. 
So when I'm in this coach and I'm cooking in this coach or using the sink in this coach, it's gonna give me that nice home feeling. Now let's take a look at the storage underneath the sink. I have a trash can and I also have a spot there where I can put a recyclable bin if need be. Above that, I have a drawer that flips down and this is a great spot for sponges. Below that, of course, I have, the I have the storage space for my sink covers, but I also am picking up a little bit of storage. So if I want to bring any dish soap with me or any cleaning material, sometimes that's where I like to put them. Next to that, I'm going to get two drawers that pull out. All these drawers should be will be soft close on the hardware. Below that, I pick up more storage. As we move down, the kitchen area. The next thing that I'm going to get to is my big overhead convection microwave. The best thing about these convection microwaves is that it's a two-in-one. It's a microwave when it needs to be or it will work as a convection oven. That means I can bake cookies, I can bake roast, all off the same appliance. As we move down, I get my two burner induction cooktop. The best part about induction cooktop is that if I have kids running in and out and I just got done taking a hot pan off this cooktop, I could literally run my fingers right across it and I'm not going to burn my fingers. Below that, I'm going to pick up a nice little storage drawer, followed by a stainless steel dishwasher. Next to that, I'm going to get more pull-out drawers. And look how deep these drawers are really giving me a great abundance of storage space in this kitchen and I haven't even gotten to the pantry yet. Now before I get to the pantry what I'd like to point out there's two things that I have yet to talk about in this kitchen that really help set it apart. Number one I have the max airflow fan right above the kitchen or right above my cooking appliances in the kitchen. That's great for when, it, when it, I'm heating something up or I'm getting something on the stove top to really keep that air circulating. And if I go back to the sink, I actually have a window next to the sink. So let's kind of move down here a little bit, if you guys would with me. Let's talk about our pantry. So this 40C is going to feature a pull-out pantry. What I like about this pantry, if it's me, is that I have access on either side of this pantry. The other thing is, is that there's a lot of area for storage in this pantry. Now, when this thing's full and you're going down the road, you have an electric latch that will work for, if the air brakes are disengaged, meaning the coach is in gear, I will have to hit this button to override the latch for the pantry. That latch is gonna keep the pantry closed when I'm going down the road and traveling. Next, let's talk about our 23 and a half cubic foot French door fridge. It's gonna be a stainless steel fridge. It's gonna feature the updated locking system for the travel locks, making it nice and simple to utilize. I do have water and ice built into the door. When I open up this fridge, it makes me feel like I'm at home because I can pack a lot of food with me. So that's gonna reduce how often I gotta run to the store. And it's really just gonna make, give me that home appearance when I'm on the road. Finally, the freezer, what I like about it is it pulls out and it's easy access. Let's go ahead and lock those back up. Moving to the center of the coach, there's a couple, few other features I'd like to point out. One is going to be the central vac. Here's going to be where your port hose would connect. What's nice about this hose is that it's going to be long enough to where it reaches the front of the coach and also the rear of the coach and, of course, everywhere in between. Also, while we're down here, let's take a look at this porcelain tile floor that we use. This is going to be a residential porcelain tile. It's also in the front half of the coach going to feature a heat option so it will be a heated tile floor in the living area. As we go directly behind me what I like to open these doors to feature are massive oversized wardrobe closet that also just happens to have a bunkhouse in it. The way that this wardrobe is set up right now is that I got my top bunk folded up and I have a nice closet rod here to where I can take the amount of clothes that I'd truly like to bring with me on my trips. You know, whether I'm in hot weather, whether I'm in cold weather, I'd like to have clothing for both available. And having this feature really gives me that option. 
The other thing that I like to do if I'm leaving this as a wardrobe is I have 32 gallon Rubbermaid containers that I have made up where everything's organized. And a lot of times when I'm going down the road, this is the area in the bottom bunk where I like to store them at. Now, when I get to the campsite, what I'll do is I'll pull those Rubbermaid containers out and go shuffle them around to the storage underneath the coach. But going down the road and really going on my trip, I wanna utilize every piece of storage that I can. Now, it's real easy to convert this oversized wardrobe to a bunkhouse. All I need to do is fold down this top bunk. Oh, so we'll get the base down and then we'll get the bed down. Now, if you look inside the bunkhouse, what you're gonna find is that the top bunk is gonna have a 250 pound capacity. It is 72 inches long. It's gonna be 30 inches wide. So it will fit a decent sized person on it. Also, you're gonna have a TV for each bunk. The nice thing about these TVs is, is that there is an HDMI port just dedicated for these TVs and also a 110 outlet. So if I need to keep, say I got kids with me and I need to keep them entertained, here you go. Let's go ahead and close these doors. Directly across from the bunkhouse, what you're gonna find is your multiplex control panel. We're gonna feature the Precision Plex Multiplex system. It will have an app that works with it that you can download called Precision Plex on any smartphone device. This Multiplex system is gonna control my lighting. Uh, it's gonna be where I can see my tank levels and my battery levels. It's gonna be where I can operate my slides, my awnings. I'll get some power management features such as automatic generator start my inverter charger to turn on and off, and just a power control setting. Next, I'll have my utilities, my thermostat, and my fans. Now let's head to the half path. Located directly across from the bunkhouse, you will find your half path. It's gonna include a porcelain toilet with a foot flush, solid surface countertops with a molded in sink, plenty of storage above and below, and you'll also have a window in there along with a max air fan. Moving back to the bedroom, what you're gonna find is the abundance of storage that you still have for clothing in this coach. If I open up all these overhead cabinet doors, what you're gonna find is that you're gonna have a closet rod running from side to side here, and you're not gonna lose this space behind the TV. And the nice thing about having these two drawers above that is that if I do have something hanging up behind here, I can open these drawers and locate it versus digging around in the back here. Next, I have my 32 inch bedroom TV. It is an LG TV, it is a smart TV. Below the TV, I'm gonna have a little cubby hole that is great for if I want to add satellite to this, I have a space to where I can add the satellite box. Below your wardrobe setup, you're going to have your dresser set up. This coach is going to feature pull-out drawers. Below the wardrobe, you're going to have eight usable dresser drawers. As we transition over to the bed, I'd like to say a couple things about the bed in this coach. Number one, it's a king size bed. So it's a 72 by 80 inch mattress. We're gonna focus on using a sort of pillow top mattress for this bed. The nice thing about that is, is that not only do I have plenty of room when I'm sleeping, but my partner also would have plenty of room. I also, if I have a sleep app machine, there's a 110 outlet on each side of the bed bases. So if I have a sleep app machine, I have a 110 outlet on each side of the bed base that's actually built into the bed base. And I have these nightstands that I can use to actually put my sleep app machine on or my smartphone. As I lay back on the bed, what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna see when I look up is I'm gonna have some multiplex controls here. I have a, master, a night master lights. I can start or stop my generator. I have reading lights on both sides. The other thing that I really like about how we do this bed is that it's on a slide and I'm gonna have cross ventilation windows. 
So if you're like me and you like that airflow on you at night, it really allows for me to kind of breathe that fresh air out in nature. That is the reason why I'm camping to begin with. As I get off the bed, one thing that I always notice on the ceiling in all of our coaches is that we have a ceiling fan. It's great for the airflow when you're trying to sleep at night. Now let's venture back to the rear bath. What's great about the rear bath is that I actually have space. So if you're like me, the kids get the half bath and the adults use this rear bath unless the kids need to shower. The shower is gonna be a fiberglass one piece shower that's gonna be big enough for me to actually get in and actually enjoy my time taking a shower. The shower in the 40C is gonna feature the shower miser system. So in a normal coach, I would turn on my diverter valve and water would be coming out of my shower head. But in any Berkshire product or Berkshire XL or XLT product, what you'll find is the shower miser system, which allows me to turn on that shower diverter valve and actually redirect that water back to my freshwater tank. The nice thing about that is, is that the shower miser system is gonna have a secondary diverter valve along with a blue mushroom cap. When that blue mushroom cap turns clear white, the water temperature is gonna be 91 degrees Fahrenheit. So instead of wasting that two to three gallons of water and letting it run to fill up my gray water tank, I'm actually gonna be able to reutilize that water. Directly outside the shower, up against the rear wall, at the top here, I'm gonna get a nice medicine cabinet along with another storage cabinet. As I move down, I have a big vanity top along with a molded sink. Below that, I'm gonna have some additional storage. Finally, next to that, I'm gonna have my stackable washer and dryer. Now, the rear toilet is positioned in the corner of this coach, giving you ample amounts of room to actually be able to use. The nice thing about this rear toilet is that it is a macerator style toilet, so it will actually pump to your black water tank. Now, let's go check out some features on the outside of the coach. Moving to the outside of the coach, where I'd like to start is on the front cap. The front cap is gonna be a one-piece fiberglass front cap. It's also gonna feature a one-piece windshield that's automatically bonded to the front cap. You're also gonna notice our overhead mounted mirrors. The nice thing about having those overhead mounted mirrors when you're the driver of the coach, it's gonna give you enhanced visibility versus any other product that's out there on the market. You're also gonna have your lane changing camera that's actually integrated up into the mirrors. As we move below the coach, the first thing that I'm running my fingers across is gonna be the diamond shield that runs across your front cap. That diamond shield we put in place to protect the front cap from rock chips or any other road hazards and really, really protect the paint of the coach. As we move over to the headlights, this coach is gonna feature stacked headlights. So it's a nice look to the front cap. Now, let me show you where the generator's at. I'm pulling the generator release right now. The generator on a diesel pusher is gonna be located in the front of the coach. So as I pull this generator out, what you're gonna find on this 40C is a Cummins Onan diesel 10,000 watt generator. We're gonna use a 10,000 watt generator because we use three ACs on this coach. And what we like to do is have a, a fully self-contained unit. Meaning if I'm out there boondocking, this generator will power everything on the coach. So I don't have to worry about will this work, will this not work for it. Let's go ahead and close the generator back up. So located right above the generator is gonna be our batch. Now this will also have a protectant on it right now as it sits, but when this would show up at a dealership, a dealership actually removes this and you'll have a nice chrome looking piece up here. So with the lit Berkshire sign. This is also a great area of the coach for me to talk about what chassis this coach sits on, folks. This coach sits on a Freightliner XCR 380 platform. What that platform is gonna use for a motor is gonna be an 8.9 liter Cummins ISL. It's also gonna use an Allison 3000 series transmission. Now what's unique to this coach that we do on our XL line that you won't find anywhere else out in the market 
for availability is that you, we have the first 380 platform that has a 15,000 pound tow capacity rating from Freightliner. How we do that is we have four wheel disc brakes all around this coach. Let's go ahead and move down to the side of the coach. As I move to the campsite of the coach, I'd like to point out that diamond shield again, because you will find the badge for the diamond shield right here, but also the full body paint of the coach. The second level of investment for the coach past the chassis is gonna be the paint job on the coach. What we're gonna utilize at Berkshire is a BASF automotive grade paint. Then, as soon as they paint the coach, the coach is gonna get four layers of clear coat on top of it, helping protect that paint job investment on this coach for many years to come. Next, you move to our entry door. Our entry door is gonna be a PTL steel true diesel style entry door. What I mean by a diesel style entry door, folks, is that it's a heavy duty door. If you look at this door, it will be thicker than what your normal RV door will be. And it's also gonna be better insulated for that, no, for that road noise and also just ins the insulation factor of the coach. As we move next to the door, I'm gonna have my keyless entry panel here. This could be a standard feature on our XL products. Just below that, I will have one of my entry points to my fuel tank. This coach will feature two fuel fills, meaning one on both sides. It's gonna have a 100 gallon fuel tank, so I can go to any truck stop and I can actually use both fills at the truck stop at the same time to fill my tank up. As we look up above, we're gonna find the first window of this coach. And all of your windows in your living area of this coach are gonna be dual pane frameless windows. The great thing about dual pane frameless windows is number one, they jostle open. So meaning if it's a rainy day, I can still open up my window to get some fresh air going throughout the coach. The second thing is, is that they're great on the condensation of not building up on the inside of the coach and showing on the windows. They also give you a nice enhanced look on the outside. If we go up above the entry door, you're gonna get your entry door awning. Moving over to the slide of the coach, what you're gonna find is a nice deep slide on this coach. It is gonna be a full wall slide. It is gonna be a hydraulic system that powers this slide. So with the slide coming out on your campsite, to make sure that you do not lose the accessibility on some of your awning footage, we're gonna mount the awning for this coach on the actual slide itself. The awning that we're gonna use is a dual pitch awning that's gonna be a latitude arm awning, meaning that there's not gonna be any bars to run into when the awning's out on the coach. It is gonna be a motion censored awning. So basically, if it's a heavy wind and I left my awning out, my awning will retract by itself. If we jump down to the front axle of this coach, this 380 Freightliner platform is gonna feature a 55 degree wheel cut on this front axle. The coach itself is gonna have four airbags, one for each set of tires per side. So if I'm driving down the road in this coach, one thing that I'd like to point out is that my generator's all the way up front, my engine's all the way back in the rear, I got the air ride suspension. What that's gonna mean to me in that driver's seat or that cockpit area is that it's a nice smooth, quiet ride traveling to wherever my destination is. As we move down the slide of the coach, you're gonna find our outdoor entertainment center. When you jump to a Berkshire XL, what you're gonna find is you're gonna get a 39 inch LED TV on the exterior. It is gonna be an LG TV. It is gonna be a smart TV. You'll also get a sound bar underneath the TV that will have the cap capability of Bluetoothing music from your phone or any mobile device. And I also have a USB port here, and this thing will still have just a simple radio built into it. So great for entertaining. You look at the location, it's directly underneath the center of the awning. As we walk back up to the front of the coach, what I'd like to do is talk about some of the storage that you're gonna have on the campsite of your coach. And I'm just gonna open up a couple bays here so you guys can see. But really the point of buying a diesel pusher is for this area, these three bays right here. What these three bays are gonna give you is pass through storage. And one of the bays you will feature a slide out tray. It is a manual slide out tray and I have access to it on both sides. 
for taller items. I can utilize any of these other bay areas. The other thing that I like to talk about when we get to this part of the coach, because it's a little bit more easy to see visually, is our foundation structure of the coach. So when Forest River calls Freightliner and wants to order a chassis for a diesel pusher, how's that chassis come into Forest River? It comes in as a raw chassis. What a raw chassis means is that it basically is two axle boxes with a motor and frame rails. So we utilize the XCR chassis. The XC is the series of chassis. The R stands for a raised rail. So if I poke my head underneath this coach, what I'm gonna see is my frame rail is tucked up right underneath my floor. Then I'm gonna have vertical posts going down. And those vertical posts are actually gonna tie into what we do at Forest River with our True Brace foundation system. See folks, when this chassis comes in with just the frame rails, it actually has a slight camber to the chassis. So as manufacturers add weight to it, the frame rails are supposed to straighten out. Or as you add weight to it, the frame rails are supposed to straighten out. Well, we at Forest River like to use things like a porcelain tile residential grade floor and a lot of residential grade materials in our coach. Doing that is gonna to add to the weight of the coach. And the last thing I want to do is have those frame rails moving around on me. So what I'm gonna do, step one on my upfit, is going to be to actually add two bars running the same footprint of the frame rails underneath this storage area that will, that will be additional tie-in points to the front and rear axle. What those two bars, what we like to call those are, are true brace foundation. That system is gonna make it to where the box and my chassis are married together as one. As I'm going down the road, my box and my chassis are gonna move as one, utilizing the suspension versus fighting each other. It's a very important point to understand about diesel motorhomes. The other thing that I like to point out with all these storage doors open is that we're gonna use an aluminum skin baggage door. The nice thing about these baggage doors is that they're heavy duty, they're very well sealed with all your bulb seals, and they're gonna help keep water out of my storage base to give me more of a dry storage area. When I go to close the doors, they will be slam latch, so it's nice and easy. This front bay here may not be passed through, but I do have a 110 electrical outlet in it, and it also gives me area to where I can bring my little knick-knack things. For me, I like to throw a lot of extension cords and other little odds and ends in here. Now let's move back to the rear of the coach. Let's stop here at the rear axle. The rear axle of this coach is gonna feature the Freightliner V-Ride rear suspension. What that Freightliner V-Ride rear suspension is gonna give you as the customer is it's gonna reduce your body roll effect when you're traveling around the country. So whether you're getting off a bell crank turn or you're driving in a bad side wind, you aren't gonna get that feeling that the coach is gonna tip over on you. As we move back to the rear, you will get your two 12 volt chassis batteries those batteries will have a hard disconnect on them, so I can, I can stop that parasitic draw if need be. And then I have two bays to where, what I like to do in these bays is use my extra fluids that I may have for the motor back here, because it's located conveniently right by the motor. So back here at the rear of the coach, the first thing that I like to point out is the one piece fiberglass cap that you're gonna have. This is gonna be your engine access door. If I look at the taillights, they are a stacked taillight look. I still have my brake light here above. Starting from the bottom of the rear cap and kind of working our way up, some of the features of this Berkshire XL are gonna be that it's gonna feature actually a 15,000 pound hitch. Folks, this is the only coach in the industry built on a 380 platform that is gonna give you the ability to have a 15,000 pound tow capacity. So my 15,000 pound hitch, my seven way plug, and then I have this nozzle down here. What this no nozzle is for is that this coach is actually equipped with the Freightliner brake sink system, which is actually providing you air all the way to your tow vehicle, if need be, right here at the rear of the coach. So it, now, if I have a trailer with air brakes, I just have a little jumper cable running from the coach to the trailer, and my air brakes on the trailer should work. Looking up top on the cap, I'm gonna have a rear backup camera. 
And then above that, I'm going to have my one-piece fiberglass roof. No seams on the roof, folks. As we move to the side of the coach, or the curb side of the coach, as many like to call it, the first bay is going to be my electrical bay. Now, in my electrical bay, what I'm going to have, I'm going to have my hydraulic manifold for my slides and my leveling jacks. I'm going to have my auto transfer switch, a 2800 watt inverter, my solar power controller right here, and my 50 amp plug. Moving up to the next bay, Berkshire XLs are going to come with six 6 volt house batteries. So this coach is going to have 660 amp hours on the coach side for batteries. The nice thing about these batteries is that there is a hard shutoff to stop the parasitic draw when the coach is in storage. The next bay up is going to feature the 13 gallon DEF tank. I would like to point out that it is on the driver's side, making it convenient to fill up at a fill station. The other side, what I'm going to have in here is my sewer hose storage. Next, we move up to our plumbing bay. Now, folks, our plumbing bay is a little bit different than what you'll find out there on the market. At Berkshire, we like to, do, we like to provide the customer with a water manifold system, similar to what you would get in a modern residential house. So if we take a look at this water manifold system, what you're going to find is point-to-point -point connections separated on hot and cold. The nice thing about having those point-to-point -point connections are my water temperature is not only going to be equalized, but my water pressure will also be equalized. Also, if I would ever need to isolate anything to do with a faucet in this coach or anything that would demand water, I can just come and turn off the water here versus trying to have to fumble around on the inside of the coach to find, find out where my shutoff valve is. So it makes it simple to use. You're also going to find a whole house water filtration system. In the door here, you're going to have a a panel for your multiplex system to where I can actually turn on my water pump out here at the plumbing bay. Now I would remind you that you still have an app that you can use on your smartphone, but this is just a convenience feature. As we move up the coach, I'm going to open up the next three bays. These are going to be the other side of that pass through storage that we saw in the coach. Like I said before, the slide out tray will slide out either side. As we move back to the bays, one thing that I would like to point out is right back here next to the plumbing bay, you're going to have your central vac canister. So, to the bay that's located on the curbside, directly behind the wheel. Now this Berkshire XL is going to come equipped with an Aquahot 250D system. What an Aquahot system is, is it is hydronic heating. When you hear hydronic heating, what you want to think about is a boiler system. So basically, this coach has a small little boiler on it that will provide the heat for the coach. How this system works is that it needs to get to a minimal temperature. To do that, it will have a diesel burner and an electric element to heat up. When I'm going down the road, I use the diesel burner to preheat my aqua hot because the aqua hot will have to get to a minimal temperature to be, be most useful to me. That minimal temperature is going to be 160 degrees. Once the aqua hot's at temperature, if I'm at a campground and connected to power, I can use that electric burner to maintain my temperature, or I can leave the diesel burner on. The decision is mine to make. That diesel burner is going to pull from the main fuel source of the coach or the 100 gallon fuel tank of diesel here. One of the byproducts of the aqua hot system is that it's going to give me a continuous amount of hot water. So when I look at other coaches on the market and one may have a water heater and then they have a furnace, well, this coach has it all built into one with the AquaHot system. It's a very, very convenient system to have on the coach. And it also will, allows the coach to be what's classified as an all-electric coach. What all-electric means is that the coach has no propane on it. Finally, as we move up, to the front corner where we started, we get the last bay that we'd like to cover. In this bay, what you're gonna have is your generator release. You're also gonna have some of your chassis fuses. What I like about what Berkshire does is that we try to put nice labeling on everything. So if I am having an issue, it's easy for me to understand where a fuse may be located at in the position. 
I'll also have my windshield uh, cleaner reservoir. And finally, in a diesel pusher, you will get an auxiliary air truck. Folks, what that air truck is used for is that if I'm taking a tow vehicle, I will be able to utilize the compressors that are on the coach itself for the air brakes and the air ride suspension to actually pump up the tires on my tow vehicle. Thanks for joining us today on this walkthrough of this 22 Berkshire XL 40C. If you have any questions about the specs or any features of this product, please go to our website, forestriverinc.com Berkshire. Thank you and have a great day.